Hey everyone out there, you are watching Wired Up Retro. It's episode number 65, and in today's episode, I'm gonna be featuring my latest and greatest video game console, the Nintendo Switch, which I just recently acquired. You know, when it first came out four or five years ago, I wasn't terribly excited about it. There, yeah, they could play some Mario games, and you know, some of the titles that were gonna be coming out looked very interesting, but of course, my biggest concern was, were they just gonna yank it eventually from the market like they did the Wii U? And you know, the Wii U had said some really amazing titles on it, but um, it just ended up not doing as well as we all had hoped it would. And so anyway, the Switch was kind of like, well, you know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But uh, as the games get, got rolling out over the past two years, I really started paying attention to the console and recognizing its great worth. So anyway, I, out I went with my uh, money to buy it recently, and I am just very elated to be the owner of a Nintendo Switch at this point. Now, the genres that really interest me, you know, being an old guy like I am, I really like the classic games, you know, Pac-Man, Dig Dug, um, some of the Capcom titles from the early 90s uh, definitely are of great interest to me. And so anyway, I, I've noticed that those games are available on the Nintendo Switch. And in my last episode, I actually played a little bit from the Capcom titles, uh, 1943, and there are a vast plethora of Capcom titles you can buy in packs of, I think, 10 or maybe it's 12. But, uh, you know, there are many options for you classic gamers. Now, I also like the action games, obviously, you know, lots of Mario games and lots of games that are pretty unique. Um, down well would be a good example. I've uh, liked this game. It's got that nice classic game flavor. And uh, I also enjoy um, not just the action games, the classic games, but the racing games. Now, for those of you who own a Nintendo Switch and are into racing games, um, you know the controversy. Um, all the current day consoles have triggers that are analog and they, they are allowing for fine tuning of your analog uh, gas and your analog braking. But this console, unfortunately, only has um, the, the click in analog, well, click in triggers. They're not analog triggers. So it's a little bit of a disappointment for those of us who are into racing games. So if you, let's say, have a PS4 or an Xbox One and you want to choose, do I get it on Switch or do I get it on one of the other consoles? You know, one of the factors that you would want to think about is that, uh, am I going to get as good control? And, you know, I play this game called WRC8, which is a rally racing game. And, you know, it feels, it feels fine to race that way. You're always just flat out pressing down on the gas every single time. And for that game, it just feels right. But there are some games where it's just not as ideal as what you really want. Uh, a good example of that would be Virtua Racing, which is made by Sega. Uh, but the nice thing about Virtua Racing is that it allows for this um, right stick to be pressed up for analog gas and pressed down for analog brake. So there is more graduated uh, control using this uh, method. And so it's nice that they incorporated that into the game system, and I, I really like that about it. Now, um, if you really want to use triggers, though, well, it's just not going to happen. Well, actually, now it is, and I'm going to show you a unique method in this episode to get certain types of controllers that no one's ever used on the Nintendo Switch working so that you can have analog triggers with gas and brake. Well, firstly, we're going to be using some unique controller adapters. This is for the Switch. It's called the Mayflash Magic NS controller adapter, wireless controller adapter. And then this is a PlayStation 2 to USB controller adapter. And I will tell you this, I found a few that could be used, not just that one, but let's take a look at a couple others. This one is a Pelican. Uh, controller adapter for PlayStation 2. This is a Fanatec adapter for use with PlayStation 2 controllers. And then this is a cheap Chinese unique looking one that uh, also works. There are a few that didn't work, which I'm showing an image of right now. So yeah, don't use those. But yeah, these are the ones that do work along with this Magic NS made by Mayflash. So let's go ahead now and uh, I'm going to just leave the, the first one I had on here. And I want to show you the controllers that will work. Now, you have to select the right PlayStation 2 era controller. 
it has to, number one, like this Thrustmaster Run and Drive, have analog triggers. The ES2 controllers don't normally have that, but this one does. And it also has to have programmability uh, on board that enables you to program the um, up and down right stick action for gas and brake to the left and right triggers that are analog. So it's got to have those conditions met. This is the wireless version of Thrustmaster Run and Drive, and that's the wired version. By the way, these have a unique gimmick in that it has like a little paddle that swivels, and it's for, you know, driving games. Is it awesome? Nah, not really. But uh, I like the thumbstick playing the racing games actually better than the swiveling. But some of you might like that better. Um, it just depends on the person, I suppose, preference. Now, there's another controller that is, comes from the PlayStation 2 era, and it's called the Fanatec Speedster controller. Now, this also has a unique um, couple of things here. One gimmick is that it swivels, okay? And I did a review of this many years ago, and I'm going to put a link in the description of my review of the Fanatec Speedster when I was kind of new at doing reviews. Anyway, it's kind of funny to watch uh, me back in the old days. So anyway, um, another nice feature about this, by the way, I, I don't usually use the swivel. I usually just kick it into the lock and uh, don't use the swivel. And then I use, um, there we go. Then I just use the thumbstick for, for doing the left and right steering. But here on the back, you have this, which is an analog for gas, and then this for an analog for a brake. These triggers, they're actually kind of reversed in the way they're set up but it feels all right when you're playing and they don't have a lot of travel. So the, um, the throw is minor. I guess it would have been better had they made it with a little bit more throw, but it is analog, so it'll get the job done. And so, um, yeah, it's a wireless controller, just like the Thrustmaster Run and Drive Black controller. So pretty cool. Anyway, um, the, this also has that unique feature of having that thumbstick be translated over to gas and brake on the triggers, okay? And uh, you have to get it kind of preset and pre-programmed uh, beforehand, but there's a, I, I, mine came with a booklet, fortunately, so I could accomplish that uh, using the instructions. And I could show you how to do it, um, probably just in the description below, you can take a look at that. Um, you might say, what in the world is going on here? Well, I think it, it's, because it's kind of designed to not just be for racing games, but maybe for fighting games where you want to get perfect diagonals and that allows for perfect diagonals. It's, it's kind of crazy looking, but uh, yeah, I guess no other controller really tried that. So might as well try it, right? Fanatec thought so. All right, so anyway, getting back to this Mayflash Magic NS, this actually not only works on Switch, but it's PC compatible and it also works on the Neo Geo Mini. So kind of a unique product. And uh, I, I really think that this product has a lot of stuff going on. It's wireless compatible. It's got these different modes. Um, there's a, a light that blinks. If you're in, uh, let's say, the red mode, you're set up to be working on a switch. There's also a purple mode for the Switch Pro controller mode. All right, so you get the idea. All right, so let's go ahead and show a couple of games. Um, there's not just virtual racing that works in that way with the right stick being for gas and brake, but there are a number of other Switch games that have that uh, built in or you know pre-programmed so that you can select it as an option in your racing controls. So that's gonna work well for our project today. All right, so I have the Magic NS plugged into the side of my Switch, and I've also got my Fanatec uh, PlayStation 2 to USB controller adapter plugged into that. And I've got this set up so that the triggers now represent the up and down of the right stick. So let's get playing this game. This is Rise Race of the Future. And we'll go ahead and try one of the challenges. Okay, so the uh, tachometer will be down there in the bottom right. Halfway all the way, full-fledged. You could definitely control how much revs and uh, kind of feather the throttle. And yes, I am a car traveling on water right now. I did feather it there and it helped. 
Now I'm feathering it again. When you're on water, it's pretty floaty. <laughs> you can slide very easily. So feathering, feathering that throttle in this game is uh, almost, I would say, it's almost a must. Now I'll use the um, dial to steer. Or you can just put one thumb on it like I'm doing there. It's, it's all right. You have to really get used to it. I'd just rather use the thumbstick though. All right, so let's move on to a virtual racing. I'll show you that. Okay, I got virtual racing up on the screen and my wireless run and drive controller is uh, now preset to do the analog gas and braking with the triggers. Inside the controller, it's preset that way. Also the game, I have preset up to do that in the controller menu for right stick up being the gas, right stick down being the brake. All right, let's get playing some virtual racing. Okay. I played this a whole lot in the arcade back in the early 90s and uh, just, just love virtual racing. What a fun game. Now you don't really have to move that thumbstick too far to the left or right to get him to move. It's pretty sensitive. All right, let's move on to our next racing game. Show you another one that has this option of using right stick for gas and brake. All right, I'm gonna give Rush Rally 3 a try. I really like this game. It has um, very good control and I like the graphics. It's kind of got those PlayStation 2 type graphics, pushing PlayStation 3 type looking graphics. And I think it's awesome that this game, Rush Rally 3, was programmed, from what I understand, by one individual who uh, obviously sunk his life into doing this the right way. And it controls really well. So I've got my Fanatec adapter hooked up to my Mayflash. And this is a wireless controller, the Fanatec Speedster. It's going to be offering us nice analog control in many ways with these triggers. So I'm just using that thumbstick to control. I'll show you the swivel here in a minute. The swiveling of the controller is definitely a unique way to play racing games. Let's just see how I'm doing here with the thumbstick first. Let's gravel. Okay, let's try the swivel. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It is an acquired taste, I'll tell you that. I'm probably going to go back to the thumbstick. In my review of this a few years back, I got used to playing Gran Turismo with this, and I actually liked it. And I'm not saying I don't like it, it's just, it's an acquired taste. It is unique. I'm getting used to it the more I play it right now. I'm gonna go back to thumbstick though. All right, here we go, lock it, and we're back into thumbstick mode. This controller is definitely not for small hands. If you have small hands, this will not be very ideal for you. I, I kind of like it. I like big controllers. 
Oh, another neat thing about this game is the different views that's offered. Let's see if I can get it to show me some different views. There we go. There you go. Now we're talking. A whole new game, you know? Anyway, pretty awesome, and I'm really enjoying this controller. I do need to get a little better at this game, though. So I decided to stick with this game. I'm not going to be playing with this controller, but I tried another one. Actually, um, this one is from the PlayStation 1 era, and when I have it in that blinking red mode for the Switch, it doesn't work properly. So I decided to try Switch Pro Controller mode, which is a purple or lavender colored blinking mode. So I switched it over to that. It's working. So this controller is very unique. It's called the Mega Racer. It's got a dial for your thumb to, to press left and right, like you would a thumbstick. If you're at the top of it, just swivel it back and forth like you would a thumbstick. But the analog gas and brakes, instead of being up here on the triggers, you've actually got push-in buttons, gas and brake. And these are analog, so they have a like a spring in them. So pretty awesome little gamepad for playing a game like this. Here we go. get control of this guy. This little mini wheel or dial has a spring inside of it. Springs back to center when you let go. It has a unique feel to it. Feathering it works nicely. All right, fun. Sixth. All right, guys. So this has been a real pleasure showing you how to use some very unique controllers on your Switch. Hopefully some of you racing game fans will now choose to buy some Switch racing games um, to enjoy some of this. Now I'm going to show a list of game titles that I know of for sure that allow that right thumbstick to control analog gas and brake. So it's, um, it's probably not comprehensive. If you know of another game that allows it that I didn't include on my list, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll uh, put it in the description so that we can have a little new list uh, as we uh, get new knowledge about some of these Switch racing games. All right, so as, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I look forward to you uh, subscribing. We're approaching 1,000 subscribers. Wired Up Retro is still uh, growing by leaps and bounds over the course of time. And I'm looking forward to showing you some other Switch uh, episodes having to do with controllers. Our next episode um, is probably going to have a lot to do with a uh, very unique PlayStation controller, PlayStation 1 controller, which uh, I won't uh, spoil it right now, but I definitely invite you to keep, uh, subscribe to my channel, and we will um, have that up hopefully in the next week, week and a half, and you'll get a notification if you click the bell. All right, and uh, definitely subscribe to me on Twitter if you haven't done that already. I look forward to conversing with you there. I do have some unique content from time to time that I put up there. And if you like my video, definitely give me the thumbs up, and I'll look forward to talking to you in the comments below. All right, till the next video, you guys have fun gaming out there, and enjoy going a little extra fast. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.